Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's uh, webinar. As you can see there, tonight we're talking about team building for beginners. And uh, for those of you who are new especially, this is one of a series of eight webinars that I run every Wednesday night, always uh, eight o'clock till, it takes us about half an hour. Um, and they are all recorded and I'll show you at the end where the recordings are. Um, and I, I cover a variety of different things. So the first two or three, really, uh, the first three are more the retail side of the business. So getting started, building your customer base, that sort of thing. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Tonight and next week is the, 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 the extra part of the business, if you like, which is all about supporting a team, building a team, um, and sharing the opportunity with other people. Because that's a way you can build a really big income from the business as well. And then the last three, six, seven, and eight, are the kind of personal development skills, really. You know, the putting a catalog out, posting stuff on Facebook, sharing the opportunity people that, with people. That's all quite simple to learn and simple to do. But despite it being simple, not everybody is successful. And step six, seven, and eight kind of work on those things that might stop you be, from being successful. Maybe you need to be better at managing your time or or more confident in speaking with people or something like that. So six, seven and eight are all about those sorts of skills. As I said, they're once a week, so it takes about eight weeks, maybe nine weeks to go around the whole lot. But you don't have to wait kind of five, six weeks if there's one that you're particularly interested in, because at the end I'll show you where the recordings are. <clears throat> so tonight, team building. What I'm going to be covering is firstly, do you have to build a team? Secondly, should you build a team? I'm then going to just cover very briefly what tools do you need in order to start team building. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about getting started and then a simple process really to follow. It's not going to be in great detail. Your sponsor is the person that really should be going through this with you in detail. So if you get inspired by this to start team building, book an appointment with your sponsor, sit down and it could just be a Skype call or a face to face call and just kind of add a bit of meat on the bones of what I'm going to show you tonight. So a quick question for everybody. If you are a clean easy distributor, do you have to build a team? That's a yes or a no answer. Guys, what do you think? Anybody got any thoughts on that? No, Kevin says no, Peter Murner says no. Anybody else got an opinion? Well, I'm going to let you in on a secret. The answer is no. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Peter. Well done. Well done, Hewell and Janice. So in fact, most distributors don't team build because you can build a nice steady income from your catalogs, from your Facebook. But what I want to share with you is those that don't are really missing out on a massive part of the business. Hi Joe, that's no problem. Thanks for saying hello. Because it's important to know that you can build a team if you choose to. And quite often people will become team builders almost by mistake, just by you know accident. You you might be running the business and doing quite well out of it, earning yourself an extra two, three, four, five hundred pounds a month. And you know, a family member or somebody says, Oh, you seem to be having loads more money now than you used to have. What are you doing? Where where's all this coming from? So you explain a little bit about what you do, and they say, oh, blimey, I could do that. Could I join? So if somebody says that to you, you don't want to just say, oh, yeah, contact head office, they'll let you know what to do, because that person might join and end up in somebody else's team. You want to just speak to your sponsor and say, you know, my brother-in-law or whoever, a customer, has said they might be interested in joining, what do we do? And your sponsor will help you get them started. Now the next question then is, if you don't have to build a team, what I'm recommending that you do, then what are the reasons? Why should you build a team? Well, one of the reasons is you can earn a much bigger income as a team. You know, if you can imagine, there's a limit to how many catalogs you can put out a day, how many Facebook posts you can put out. But if you've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 people in a team, you can imagine that there's going to be a lot more going through your business and you will earn you know, a commission and bonuses based on what your team do, not just on what you do on your own. So you get a much bigger income. 
but one of the other big benefits from it is that the income that you earn from your team is what we call a residual income. And, and what I mean by that is, I'll, I'll explain that in a bit more, but, but in, a, in a moment, sorry. But the main things are, obviously, if, if you're just building your business around, <coughs> excuse me, delivering catalogs or uh, posting on Facebook, so every day you're doing that, that's fine. That's kind of like a self-employed job, really. But the trouble with being self-employed is if you're ill, then nobody's going to be delivering your catalogs for you. Nobody will sit on your phone and post your Facebook posts for you. Or if you go on holiday and you're doing those things, obviously you can't do that as well. But if you've got a team, you got paid. You get paid all of the bonuses because your team are obviously still earning money for themselves, and that gives you the bonuses, and you get paid. So even when you choose not to work or you cannot work, then you can earn a big income from that. So that's a really important part of the business. So what do you need in order to be able to build a team? Well, there's a couple of kind of fairly obvious and basic things, but I will go through them all. So firstly. You need some kind of diary, whether that's a, um, a you know piece of like a paper diary, a book diary, or whether it's an online kind of calendar of some kind. You do need to be able to keep track of appointments that you make with people, because once you start recruiting and you're generating leads and you're speaking to people, and maybe somebody wants to spend a bit more time and have a look through the information, so they say, please could you call me up on Wednesday, you know, after 10:30 or something like that. You need a way to be able to track that. Please don't rely on your memory. You might have a fantastic memory, but it's far, far safer to keep track of it somewhere. So having some kind of diary. A contact manager is really, really useful. And a contact manager is simply a piece of software that keeps track of all of the different contacts, the people who've contacted you over the years. <coughs> Excuse me. And it just allows you to track that information in one place. It also allows you to make notes of conversations that you've had with them or you know they might say oh I'm really interested but we're going away on holiday for a month you know is there any way you could call me back in a month's time and we can get you started and you can kind of keep track of all that information in a contact manager and there are a variety of different ones I'm not going to recommend a particular one here because I know within the business different people use different tools so again speak to your sponsor because your sponsor can recommend the one that they use and that makes a lot of sense for you to use the same one as your sponsor because then obviously they can help you with that. You do need a telephone, you know, and you need to be able to speak to people. I know these days it's so easy to text and Facebook message, but by far the best way to find people in the business and the best way to support them is face to face or over the phone or word of mouth. You know, you can share information over the, on a text, but you know, actually inspiring somebody and listening to their story so you can best help them the best way to do that is over the phone and you need some information to send to your prospects so you know you need you know either you know an information pack you can send dvds in the post i personally prefer to do it much quicker than that so sending people information through an email or a facebook message or a text is the best way to do that so you'll need some information to send them now a, a fantastic and really easy way to get started is just using your warm list. And so a really simple way to do this is just make a list of 10 people that you know. And it has never ever been easier to do that now. If you go through your list of Facebook friends, just pick your 10 closest friends out of that. Or go through on your mobile phone, go through your contacts list, pick your 10 best friends from there. And, and that's a great place to start. Just pick, pick those 10 people. Now what we do is we're not going to ring them up and say, Ah, oh, Susan, you're always skint. Why don't you join my business? You could do with earning a bit of extra money. Because all that's going to do is get them really cross with you. So the best way to do it is to use what we call a third-party approach. So all that you do is give them a call or send them a text saying, Hi, Laura. Hope you're really well. Sorry to message you out of the blue. But I just want to let you know I've just started my own online business. I'm really excited about it. Who do you know? that would like to earn some extra money working from home online. Now the important thing then is that bit, who do you know? Because you're not saying to, in this example, you're not saying to Laura, would you like to join? Because then Laura might not want to join. And then you're closing the door on anybody that she might know. But by saying who do you know, she could say, oh, well, actually, I might be interested in that. Or my sister-in-law's just lost her job or had her hours cut. Or oh, one of my old friends has just lost her job. So... 
that way you start her thinking about who she might know who could be interested. And you don't have to stop at 10. You can work your way through your friends list every day, send them a message. Now, some people just ignore your message. Some people will get back to you and say, sorry, I don't know anybody, but if anyone comes to mind, I'll let you know. But anybody that you don't hear from, just give them a quick call or send them a text. Did anyone come to mind? Because that's you're just kind of asking them again, just to think again about about whether they can think of anybody. And the whole point of this approach is, it is a hopefully you will find some team members. You will find somebody who's interested in what you what you're doing, interested in learning a bit more about it. But what's more important is not that those people might join now. But you're telling all your friends, your 200 Facebook friends, your 300 people in your phone, that you have an opportunity for them to earn some extra money working from home if they choose to do so. And the time may not be right for them now, but you never know when their circumstances will change. When suddenly they get, a, you know, interest rates go up and their mortgage goes through the roof, or the landlord puts the rent up, or they've got to move house and there's a massive cost, or it could be anything. And you want them to know that if if they need to earn a bit of extra money, maybe part time or maybe full time, that you've got a way that they you can help them. So they need to know that. So you, you're sowing seeds that may not come to to fruition within the next month or two months or five months or year or five years. But who knows when their circumstances will change. Now, another great way to get started is if you're doing the Facebook selling, and I appreciate not everybody does, but if you are, then your selling group is a fantastic place to, to do this because your selling group is not for selling. Well, it is, but what you have to be aware of is it's a network. It's a network of people who are on Facebook who, like, who are interested in the buying and selling things. And people on Facebook who are interested in buying and selling might also be interested in earning money on Facebook buying and selling. So it's a network of people who might buy from you but also might be interested in starting their own business. So try to build your online selling group big and quickly. The, the bigger you can build it, the better because every single one of those people in your group are potentially a team member or may know a team, may know somebody. So building your group, um, it's loads of different ways to do that. You know, always ask your friends if they can, if they'd be happy to join the group, and ask them to invite their friends. Say, oh, my friend's just started a new online business. It'd be great if you could join her group just to help her get started. Promote your group in other local groups and use competitions. There's lots of other ways to do it. Speak to your sponsor to find out more details. If that, if your sponsor isn't big on Facebook and you're doing a lot more yourself. Ask your sponsor if they've got other team members who might be big in Facebook. Uh, Facebook, So you can kind of do a bit of cross-line support with somebody else in your team. They may not be downline from you, but maybe cross-line, but within your sponsor's team or, or their sponsor's team. And so you can get together and create a group of two, three, four, five of you, all helping each other with little hints and ideas about what's, what's working well for them. And you can repeat this, this asking your friends, promoting it in local groups, using competitions. You can do this over and over again. You don't just do it once and think, well, I've only got 500, that's it. This is something that you do over and over again, forever and ever, as long as you're in the, in the business. And the other great thing to do within your selling group is to make sure that everybody who's in that group is aware that this is not just a place for buying and selling things, but that they can, that you're looking for people to do the same. So you can little, put a little post on. Exactly the same as you posting your pictures of duvet sets and so on. And just say something along these lines. I'm just curious if anyone would like to earn some extra cash just advertising some of the stuff in this group like I do. This is what I earned. Or if you don't have a check yourself yet, because you only get your check when you get your 10% bonus. So if you're not there yet, then ask your sponsor if you can borrow, use one of their checks. So here's an example. Here's what I earned, or here's what my friend Haley earned in her first few weeks. Comment below or message me if you're interested. And the best checks to use, and I would use a variety if you've got different people in your team or your sponsors or whatever, but the best checks to use are your first ones. Because you may well have a sponsor who's earning a thousand pounds a month, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand pounds a month, but they will have been in the business for a while. And if you just put a check up saying ten thousand pounds a month, 
people will think, oh, that sounds like one of these you know, get rich quick schemes, I'm not sure about that. But if you put something up saying, this is what my friend earned in her, you know, in her first four weeks, and it's like £200, people are going to think, that's certainly believable, and actually an extra 200 quid a month would make a massive difference to most people. So, and that's very believable, and they will think, oh, you know what, I could do that. So you're going to get a lot more responses from that kind of thing. And the beauty of, of this is that the leads are fantastic. So firstly, they're free. I mean, not entirely free because you have to spend your time kind of um, commenting, you know, uh, putting a post up and everything. But you know, relatively, it doesn't actually cost you any money to, to post something on Facebook. And um, Firstly, and secondly, you know that everybody who replies is on Facebook. So that's great. They've got the skills that they need to already already to run the business. And they can see the evidence. They can see the check and they can see what you do. They can see that you're posting pictures, that you're selling things. They can see the product range. They can see comments on your posts. So they can see how it works. It's almost like you're, you're showcasing the business to them. So anybody who replies already has a head start. And as I was saying earlier, your first checks are the best. Once you've been in the business for a while, if you're earning 500 or 1,000 or 2,000, I would put those up as well occasionally, but people will often want to know what did you earn in your first four weeks? Because that's what they'll be thinking, well, what could I earn? You can see this picture there. That's just an example. There's a check that we put up, and I just got loads and loads of comments there from people saying, oh, can I have some more information, please? Could you send me some information back? Can you give me a call? All sorts of little things there. Sorry, it's a bit small, but hopefully you get the gist of that. Now, I'm just going to go through a very, very simple high-level process on what I do when somebody replies to one of my adverts on there. So, the process is, there's four little steps there. Firstly, they have to reply to the advert, obviously. Secondly, you need to send them some information. Thirdly, you need to follow that up. People will often look at the information and think, oh, that's interesting. I might get back to Chris tomorrow. And then kind of, you know, life gets in the way, they forgot to get back. So you have to follow them up. And then assuming they're interested, you can then sign them into the business. So let me just expand on that in a bit more detail. So when someone replies to an advert, you need to get information to them as soon as possible. So if you've got a contact manager, which I talked about earlier, then you can set it up to automatically send them information as soon as they fill in their details on, on a, a website. So that's a great way to do that. It gets information to them straight away. If you don't yet have a contact manager, that's absolutely fine. Just have a like an email ready or a, a piece of text that you could send them that says you know something along the lines of uh, thanks very much for your response. Um, have a, a quick visit to this website. There's some short videos that explain a little bit about what we do. Uh, please let me know what you think. So it's, you know it's really not complicated what you have to send send to them. Um, and the information that I send to them, and, and you can, there's various different versions of this, but probably the best one that you can send is there's the independent you video. So this is a, a clean easy video. There's a, um, a there's one version that has clean easy on it, and one which is doesn't have clean easy at all. So make your, uh, my recommendation is to use the one that doesn't have clean easy on. Obviously, if the person that you're sending it to knows it's clean easy, then it's not a problem. But if they don't, they might see it and think. Ah, oh, clean easy was that thing with catalogs. My mum used to buy mops from them. Oh no, I wouldn't be interested in that. Even though they've seen it's totally changed, it, that the wording might just put them off. So I would send them the the independent new video that's unbranded, doesn't have clean easy on it. Just have a click on it. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. And um, again, if you're not quite sure how to send somebody a link to a video, speak to your sponsor and they can explain in, in more detail how to do that. But it's fairly straightforward. Now, what I would then do is call them up as soon as possible, certainly within 24 hours. Now, depending on how they've responded, they might not have a telephone number. So in which case, send them the link. When they come back to you and say, yeah, this looks really interesting, you can then say to them, OK, the next step is just for me to have a quick chat with you and then I can explain how it all works. What's the best number to call you on? So call them back as soon as you can. If you haven't heard from them, then you know give, you can sort of send them a text saying or a message just saying what did you think. But the phone call is the, the critical part in this whole process really. And the purpose of the phone call isn't 
to convince them to join, to persuade them about anything. It's, the purpose of the phone call is just to build a bit of rapport with them, to get to know somebody, because you might speak to them and think, oh my God, what a problem, I wouldn't want them in my team anyway. So, you know, don't think that everybody who asks for some information deserves your time and attention. For some people will say, oh yeah, I'm really interested in that. And actually what they're interested in is sitting at home earning money and they've got no intention of doing any work. So you do need to have a conversation with them and say, would I be happy to work with this person? So you're building rapport with them in this phone call. Ask a bit about their situation. You know, what's your situation? What do you do at the moment? You know, there might be a mom at home with the kids. Maybe they're at work full time. They just need a little bit extra to treat themselves to a holiday. So they're looking for evenings and weekends or that sort of thing. And the most important part of this conversation is for you to listen to them. If you come off a phone and you think back, right, that was a four minute phone call and I've been talking for three and a half minutes of it, then that's, that's not going to work. It needs to be much more, I mean, ideally, they've been talking for most of it and you've just been saying, uh-huh, yeah, oh, wow, you know, and encouraging them to tell you about their situation. Because if people can talk to you, they feel that they know you and like you and trust you because you've been kind enough to listen to their situation. So listening is a critical skill. And if you're not very good at it, if you're one of these people that just talks and 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 talks, and then you forgot why you why you what you were talking about, you've got some skills to learn. The sorts of questions you might ask them again after about their situation. The next thing would be, have they watched the video? Because if they haven't watched the video, they kind of don't really know very much about what you do yet. I mean, obviously they'll have seen you in your selling group if that's where they've come from. But if it's a lead from a friend of a friend or something, then you know they they may not. But they may not be familiar with what you're doing at all. So firstly, you just want to ask, did they watch the video that you sent them? And then what did they like most about it from their point of view? And the purpose of asking that question is what you're trying to do here is, again, find out what's important to them. Is it the flexibility because they've got children, so it's really difficult for them to get a normal job? Is it just the fact that they can earn some extra income around their full-time job? Is it the products that they really like? Is it, you know, whatever it is, you're learning more about their situation and you're building, you know, the longer these phone calls go on, you know, with a limit, um, the better because then you, you, you're, if, they, if you're listening to them talk, they're building confidence that you're a sort of person they'd like to work with. And then at the end of that, what I recommend you do is just say to them, okay, the next step is just for us to go through the details in a bit more, uh, in a bit more detail. And that will take us about 10 minutes or so. Now, if you've been doing this for a while and you know exactly how to go through this, you can do this there and then with them. Um, what I tend to do is just say, um, I can't do it right now. I'm just about to dive into a meeting. It doesn't matter whether you are or not. I'm just about to dive into a meeting. Could I give you a call back you know, this evening or tomorrow morning? And the reason for that is a couple of reasons. One is you want... To them to think, you know, you don't want them to think that you're desperate. If you sort of say, oh yeah, we can go through it straight away, yeah, yeah, let me get, let me get all my details together and then we'll go through it, and it just comes across as desperate. They want to think that you know, you're busy, you've got other appointments going on, but you're really happy to commit, you know, a quarter of an hour, half an hour of time to go through with them. And so you can do that this evening or tomorrow morning or whatever. The other advantage for you is, especially if, if this is something that's a bit new to you, it just gives you a bit of time to prepare what you're going to say. So, you know, you know you're know, you not kind of thinking, oh, God, what did I, I've been through this a couple of times, but I've forgotten everything I'm going to say. And it just you just feel a bit unconfident. Whereas if you know, this is what I'm going to say, this is what I'm going to show them, I've just run through it quickly for myself for five minutes, right, I know what I'm going to say now. So it just gives you a few minutes to kind of prepare for that. Um, I haven't actually been through in detail yet what you go through with them. Again, it, oops, let me just go back from here. Um, Speak to your sponsor about that. There, there's two or three different, oops, two or three different websites that you can go through with them that show them basically how the system works. So speak to your sponsor, and your sponsor will show you the website that, that your team uses. Now I did talk about a contact manager earlier, and one of the reasons why I think it's worth investing in a contact manager um, is that um, most people who ask you for information and look at what you send them, will not join immediately. If you can get one out of ten to join, then you're doing amazingly well. So, you know, 90% of people and more will not join straight away. 
But that's okay, because what you're doing at this point is building a list of people who have had a chance to have a look at what you want, of what you can offer them. Might not be right for them now, but you never know when their circumstances might change and they will come back to you and say, do you remember we had that chat you know, last month, last week, last year? My circumstances have changed a bit now. Can you tell me again about what we do? And by having this big database in your contact manager, it gives you the opportunity to just to keep in touch with them by sending them little success stories. You know, you can send an email to 100,000 people with links to little success stories or videos or something like that. And, and you never know when their circumstances might change. You want them to think of you and think, ah, oh, does that guy keep sending me those emails? Yeah, perhaps I'll have another look at it now. Because as I've said at the bottom there, you never know when their circumstances might change and this might be just the answer to their problems. Now, you will get people, surprise, surprise, who say to you, actually, yeah, this, this looks really great. I'd love to do that. And they're happy with the cost and they're happy with the, how it all works and they're happy with that. So they say, fantastic, how do I get started? So when you're sponsoring someone, there's a couple of little things that you can do. Always, always do the sign up with them. I mean, it's fairly simple these days, but the number of times I've heard people that say, yeah, I, I went through, did the sign up process, sent them the link, um, and they never filled it all in. And they, you know, if you just send somebody a link and leave, it, leave them to get on with it, something will happen. They, they will start looking through it and they'll just see a little message somewhere or something on the screen that gives them second thoughts. And they think, oh, I'm not sure now. Or it gets to the point where they have to make their payment and they're thinking, oh, crikey, should I do this? Should I not? So, you know, whereas if you're doing it with them, either face to face, if they're close to you and you can pop around, have a cup of tea and do it together, fantastic. Obviously, if it's a friend, it's a lot easier. But if it's somebody that you don't know, then always stay on the phone with them. Give them a call, say, right, if you're ready to do it, we can go through now. All I need to do is send you an email, go through some details with you. Um, tell them at that point, you will need your bank card, your credit card, or your debit card to pay the startup fee at the end of this process. It's going to take us about 10 minutes or so, maybe a bit, little bit longer if you have any questions. And it's a really good idea to kind of anticipate the questions. So as you're taking them through the steps, there's, there's literally only four screens, so it's not complicated. But there are certain spots where they might ask a question about, oh, what's a caterpillar then? What's all that about? Or... Um, or what's this box I need to tick because there's a new boxes now about whether you're on the sex offenders register and things like that so you just need to kind of be aware of what's going to be there and then you're on the phone so you can answer their questions there and then because if they if you're not on the phone to them and they have a question and they're thinking oh well I don't want to pester him he's probably really busy they won't and you'll lose them and then as you come through the whole step they put their card details in it comes up and it says their uh, payment successful so just give them a quick congratulations welcome to the team explain what you're going to do with them next and um, one of the things I do with them on the phone so we're still you know this is literally like 30 seconds after they've completed the sign up if you're not already send them a Facebook friend request because Facebook's such a powerful tool for sharing with them and especially if they're going to use Facebook for doing the selling side of the business and the recruiting side of the business it's essential so get them to send you a friend request there and then while you're on the phone because that will just speed everything up really really quickly um, and then plan a getting started appointment with them I always do a quick kind of um, half an hour appointment with them either that evening or the next day just going through with them a bit more detail on you know what they're looking for out of the business um, so you can start to talk to them about whether well, catalogs will be coming in a couple of days uh, we can get your Facebook group set up. Here's some pictures of the best-selling products and that sort of thing. And if you if your group does an induction webinar or anything like that, then you can kind of book that with them and make sure they're aware, they're aware of when that is. And um, and a great, I think Facebook's fantastic for you know all of this kind of building rapport at the beginning. So if you've got a support team group, and if you haven't, speak to your sponsors because you really should have one set up. You can kind of congratulate them welcome them to the team get your colleagues and other team members to welcome them as well and it's just a great way to welcome somebody into the business okay guys so it's i make that 8 30 pretty good timing i reckon about half an hour is pretty good so hopefully you'll now have a pretty good idea of 
whether or not you have to build a team, and the answer is no. Whether you should build a team, and I would advise you the answer to that is yes. The tools that you need, it's really not complicated. At the end of the day, you know, a phone and a, a diary of some kind is pretty much all you need. A great way to get started, just using your Facebook friends list and your contact list on your phone. What to do when you then get somebody who is interested and what information to send those people who want a bit more information. That independent new video is just a fantastic thing. Literally, it's four minutes long. gives them a really great idea as to how the business works. And then what to say with a follow-up, what to do, how to go through it with them. But especially those last few steps, the kind of what to do when you get a lead, what information to send them, how to follow up. Probably, if you're new at this and you're not that familiar with it, this is where you, you really need to get the support from your sponsor. And if your sponsor is quite new, then it's absolutely fine to say, can, I, can we speak to your sponsor? So you get somebody who's done this before who can guide you through it and, and help you with that. It's not complicated, but just at the beginning, it's a real help and a boost for your confidence if you can get somebody to help you and guide you through those bits. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it for this evening. Uh, next week, uh, we're on to number five, which is if you do what we're doing, what we're saying tonight, then you will have some new team members by next week and you'll want to know how to support them. Because hopefully, when you join this business, you've got loads of help and support from your sponsor to help you get off to a great start. What we are not is the kind of business that just sort of says, right, here's a lot of catalogues, here's a video on how to do the Facebook side of things, good luck. Um, get on with it and if you have any problems let me know. You know that, that's not the way to build a team. You need to be speaking to them, meeting them if they're local to you, Skype calls with them but anyway I'm telling you about next week's, video, uh, next week's webinar before we even do it. Okay so last but not least I said that this is all being recorded so I'm just going to turn off that recording now.